Hello everyone, this is Gwydion, and this is a video to show you how to set up and play around of Role Player on Fantasy Grounds. Now, Role Player is a board game, and it's created by Thunderworks Games. My family and I found it about a year, year and a half ago, and my wife, my two girls, and I really enjoy playing it. It's a really unique game where essentially you, your whole goal is to create the best character and the best role-playing character. So it's super fun. Um, I converted this into a Fantasy Grounds module with the permission of the author, Thunderworks Games. I might butcher the name, but it's Keith Matejka. Mateha, Matejka, I think. <laughs> I apologize. But um, super fun game. He was great. He allowed me to convert this for free. So I'm using the more core rule set for this. So... Let's dive right in, because I want to not make this too long, but hopefully show you how to play it. Okay, so a couple things. Actually, let me open required items first. So quick recap of what you need. So if you go on the Fantasy Grounds forum, and I'll link this in the video below, but if you go to the uh, Fantasy Grounds forums, I created a thread on Role Player by Thunderworks Games, and it includes the whole write-up of what you need. So you basically will need the more core rule set. And you'll see it all in here. So let me get rid of that. But you need the more core rule set. So keep in mind that although a number of rules load up automatically and are updated automatically in Fantasy Grounds, more core rule set is not one of them. You have to go to the link on Fantasy Grounds forums. So, and again, I'll post this in the video, but more core rule set, and if you scroll down, you'll download this more core pack file, and then you'll save that into your Fantasy Grounds data file where your rule sets are located. Role player extension. What that is, is this whole background you see image is an extension, and I loaded it up through that extension, um, but I, I created a copy so you can just load that when you're launching Fantasy Grounds. You'll make sure that you load this extension You'll put it in your extension folders, click on it, and then you're going to launch uh, Fantasy Grounds and More Core. And it looks, as I get all these things set up and get ready to play the game, it'll look a little cut off. But keep in mind, this whole playmat is intended for both role player and the expansion. So the nice thing is, even with the combat tracker up, and even with our buttons on the side here, those are part of the expansion. So you don't really need them. All you really need is the this first row up here, and you need this market card section that's down here in the middle. So it'll work perfectly, even though it might look like it's going to be a bit cut off. There's also a basic card. Oh, I already made a mistake there, but I'm going to keep rolling. Basic card deck table extension. Um, that was created by Trenlo. And that allows me to simulate kind of a dice bag and a card deck. Um, and I'll explain that as I go through here. And I also created some images in this roleplayer.ppk file. That has a number of portraits so as we get into the characters you'll see why i did this so without further ado let's jump in i'm going to actually jump into the library so when you get the module file loaded up click on role player and celestian as many of you know he, he created a, a reference manual an author extension that is really cool and it makes it easy to uh kind of put this in a format that is easy to read. So here we go, credits, Thunderworks Games. Um, I also, some of the dice images that I'll get into um, were created, and I'm using that using a, a Creative Commons license. The black inverted dice are Della Pute, Pute, geez, I'm butchering everything tonight. And the inverted, uh, the inverted black dice are Skull, all other dice are Della Pute. I'm probably saying that wrong, and I did the conversion. All right, so let's get into the setup. I want to show you how to set this up. So before you even start, you're going to open up your tokens module. And mine has a number of bags. Yours won't have probably nearly as many. Locate the role player. And here's a role player dice pool. There's the token bag. And then do what you can see. I've already done this because I didn't want to take time on the stream here or the uh, video but you wanna drag and drop the dice all colors. You don't need to worry about these tokens. Those are there just in case you wanna use them later during the game. But all these dice tokens you wanna drag and drop. 
So you'll see on my normal bar, I've got the black dice. If I hit shift, I've dragged all of the blue dice on, control, yellow dice, alt, purple dice, control, alt, white dice, and shift, alt, red dice, and then finally, I think, shift, control, green dice. So I've got them all on my heart bar, hot bar, heart key bar. Another thing, and this is just, um, it just makes it a little bit easier for you, but the other thing I would do is open your options menu. And I'll put it kind of right next to my image here, but you scroll down to where it should say more core options and turn off all of these trackers because you really don't need them for the game. The, the reason I use the combat tracker is just to track the start player and then the rounds. So if you see here, health column off. So I'm going to change that to off. Defense off because I don't need it. Oh, well, actually, I don't need those colors. Here we go. Wounds off. And wound sum off. And column four visibility off. And column five, let's see, off. I think I've got them all off now. All right. Take that off. And then let's get into the setup. So what I did is I took the normal setup out of the game, the official rules, and you'll, you're going to see that in the numbers. And then I have FG notes to explain how does that translate in Fantasy Grounds. So give me some feedback and let me know if that works for you. But all players roll a die, a six-sided die. And the highest roll is the start player. So just have people grab a D6, throw it in chat. Whoever has the highest will be the start player. So beginning with the start player, and then you can just, I guess, chat amongst yourselves as to... Uh, how you want to maybe just do it in order of dice rolled, but you're going to select a character. So how do you do that? Uh, I said, go to the images circle icon. This is what I mean by the circle icon up here. So click on images. Let me just kind of move this to make it easier to see. So click on images, select the character board group. So here's the grouping character board group. So here are all your characters and select the image of the character you want. So there are really six types, but there's a female and male version of each. So I've already hotkeyed the dwarf, or sorry, the elf male. So I will grab him. And for now, so this is a pretty cool image. It's pretty good detail. Uh, I was able to get the assets directly from Keith. Um, he was kind enough to give them to me. So for now, I'm just going to get rid of that character board. Then the rest of the players would grab one too. So I've done that. Um, so once you select the character, click on the character circle icon. Okay, so let's do this. I've already hot keyed it down here, so I can close this for now. Um, so now I'm going to select the character circle icon here, and you're going to see it's blank. So there's two ways you can do what I'm about to do. Select the blue up arrow icon, and this is all, sorry, the pregens. Let's do that again. These are all the pregens that I've created. Another way you could do it, so if you go to the library, and you can see right here, pre-generated characters. It'll pull those up right there. Either way, either way it works. So we're going to find the elf. And I make a note in here, I believe, um, that I only created one character sheet for each character. I didn't need to do a male and a female. So I'm going to hit the plus sign here to load that character sheet. And there we go. We've got the character sheet. And so I've already got in my version this portrait loaded, but let's go ahead. So this is a dragon kin, not the one we want. So let's click on find the bag, which I should have. Here's my role player bag. And here are all the images. So if I find the elf male, elf female, so I'm going to click double click on the elf male. And you see it pops up right there. Beautiful. All right. Done there. So Next step, each player takes five gold. Uh, if there's a third player, third player in player order receives one additional gold. So what I did is I changed these hero points to where you could just type in the number of gold you have. So later on, when we get to what's called the market phase and you use your gold, you'll be able to just double click this and it'll show up in chat. Move this for a second. Clear chat. Actually, I'll do this so we have this for later. 
because I like to hotkey clear. Sometimes it's hard to do that. So let's just click on that. And if I double click on this, it'll make it a four and it'll say Alpha's using a gold piece, which is kind of cool. And you can name your character if you'd like. All right. So the top of the character sheet, I, that's where I explain that I use the hero points next to the portrait. I already found another error. Darn it. It's hard to find all your errors. Okay, beginning with a start player and proceeding clockwise, each player draws a random die from the dice bag. So for now, I am going to let's see, can I be able to do that? Ah, okay. Do that again. Should be able to hotkey him. Okay. There we go. All right. Um so what you're, what you're basically going to do is simulate drawing a die. So without reading through all this, I'm just going to go straight to the FG section. So I created a class card table. So this is where you're trying to pick your card. So I've got the table loaded right here. So you're trying to determine who your starting character is and what class you're going to represent. You can also just, if you decide that you guys agree, actually, let me reset this to show you. But this is where the random card table comes in. So I've already clicked on, and this should, I believe, already be set for you, but you'll want to have this check mark for cards and then auto. And what it'll do is because you can't have the same person play the same class, when you roll, once you've rolled, it'll show you which card you receive, and then it'll take that card out of the, uh, the simulated deck. So let's just roll on this table. So I rolled a two, and you can see I selected green, and now that is shown as used. So nobody can use that anymore. So if I select green, and in the physical game, there's a front and a back card, so I just put the two cards in here. So I could pl pick a druid or a ranger. Since the original Gwydion was essentially a ranger, I'm going to pick a ranger. So... We've done that. Uh, da, 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 stable. So drag the class card to the class card section of your character board and pin it there. So here's what I mean. So let's kind of make this character board. Here's my character. Expand this a little bit. So the backstory or the class card, excuse me, would go here. So I'm going to make this in general. I think I'm going to have this pretty big. Something like that. See how big it'll look if I do the vertical. Yeah, let's move it up just. This is going to get a little bit big, but that's all right. Let's do horizontal. There we go. It's not bad. Okay. So what I would do is I would size it to where it kind of fits your sheet when you, when you want it there, and then right-click. We'll adjust vertical, make it a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is pin it so it's there. And I'll close it and it should select it right back. So it's kind of cool. So you could always have it right there. And I'm going to close this down and it's going to be on my character sheet. So then you're going to do the same thing for backstory cards and alignment cards. So same thing. And you'll go around the table. You can figure out how to do it, but I just rolled. And again, you'll see, I got the resilient background. I said background, backstory. I think I fell into the D&D &D 5e trap and just called it background. I think it's called backstory officially. So let's do this. Let's pull up my character sheet again. Let's size backstory or background. Let's do just vertical. Yeah. Pin it. So it's here, so we can always get back to it. Size it. Boom. There we go. So if you want those, I guess it does flip back and forth, which is fine. It shouldn't be a big deal. And then finally, we need our alignment. So let's go to alignment and do the same thing. Roll on the alignment deck. I got Renegade, it looks like. Here we go. Pull this back up. Let's make this right about yay. 
just vertical. There you go. Let me pin this. One thing, it might be hard to do, but what I would probably do is, if you look at your class card, and I don't think I explained this, but see how mine's green? What you do in the actual game, the board game, is you need to track this, and I don't know if I'm going to have time on this video. I'll probably do a playthrough round as a separate video because this is going to get long. But if I find green, for me, it's on shift control, and I just pick any die, but maybe pick a green die here. And since I've already... Um, in the alignment card, I pre-set a grid so that this I could do this easily. So what I would do here is during the game, if you have certain cards that you play called skill cards, you have to move your alignment up and down according to the card, and you actually get points at the end of the game. But this could simulate that very easily. So that's what I would recommend. So that way, when you pop up your alignment, you've got your color right there, your card, and you're, you're good to go. So what this means is if your alignment comes down here at the end of the game, you'd lose a point. If it's up here by the end of the game where you want it to be, you'd gain three points. So, all right, done. All right, so we've got all that. Backstory, alignment, um, pin the backstory cards. I've done that. Now this says separate the market cards into single dot and double dot card piles. And the dots are in the, in the corner of the card. So again, so what I did is I created Actually, did I miss a spot here? Oh, player aid card. So if you want to go through this and pin this to the hotkey bar, it kind of tells you what each round entails. I feel like I missed a step with the uh, setting the market deck, but maybe not yet. Okay. So I created two tables. So I've got them down here, one with one dot cards and one with two dot, because to simulate the random piles. Because what you're supposed to do if you read up here is you're going to shuffle the pile separately and place the single dot pile on top of the double dot. So basically, you're going to go through all of the single dots first in the physical game until you get to the double dot pile, which are just better skills and traits and things. So I just created two tables so that when you roll on them, it'll, again, delete the, the card out of the deck, kind of remove it. But if you look at each of these, you can see a single dot here, and it'll tell you if it's a weapon trait a skill armor or i think that's it weapon trait skill armor so that's so i've done that already and you create the market deck by drawing cards from the market deck equal to the number of players plus one so i think i'll simulate the actual game later as i said but um let's see windows Yeah, so the one thing I'm not sure that I really... Oh, here we go. So what I didn't explain is the initiative card. So I say here, create the market deck by drawing the cards, which is fine. So let's just say we're playing... Um, let's just say we have three players. So we're going to draw... Or no, let's say we have four players. So we're going to draw five cards. So what you would do is you would pull up the market deck and you can hotkey these i'm going to clear my chat to show this to you but we're going to draw five cards so i'm going to roll five times one two three four five okay so you can see oh i had already pre-selected some anytime like if, if you want to do that again let's just let me show you that again so if i screwed up and in this case i already taken cards out of the deck if you right click on the table reset all cards It'll reset all the cards for you. So let's do the five now, clean. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, close the market deck. And now we're gonna line these up in the second row. So I'm gonna come back to the top. So here's a weapon. So what you would do is, and just make it relatively close, but I'm gonna do this. See it just vertical. And you can obviously zoom in because it's going to be a little bit hard to read. But we'll start with the Ancient Spear. Got a long sword. Like I said, you just want to make it to where your players, people can read it. So let's do this. A little bit more. Horizontal. 
I'm being anal here. I probably shouldn't. This is a video. It doesn't make for a good video here. Me continuing to mess around with this, but here we go. Close enough. See armor mystic cloak. Trait honest. So this is gonna make so as you play the game, you'll be able to buy buy these cards and reckless. So reckless, the reason I did five is I wanted to bring it down here and just this doesn't have to be. This is just so that you guys know what cards are out there. Just horizontal. There we go. So there's your whole market deck. I can get clear that out. Leave that on. Now line up the initial card initiative cards. Select the Set up the appropriate initiative cards using the top row of the background image. So this is the number. And basically, you're going to have, should tell you, with three players, return the five. So with, you're, you're basically going to have the number of initiative cards is going to be the number of players plus one. So with two players, you're going to have three. Three players, you're going to have four. So what I want to, so what I'll do is I'll get these images and set them up for you real quick. Vertical. A little bit, might be a little bit hard to read on my screen. My screen's a little bit high, but we'll just do. And if you see these little gold token coins, I must have left a dice on. I'll get to that in a second. I want to show you that so the gold coin should be on um, every image. Oh, that's for two players. So in my case, if you're playing, and this doesn't have to be again perfect. It's just kind of lining them up up here, somewhat in accordance with the cards, and then four. So if you have three players, you should, in theory, have cards equivalent to, you should have one more card, and the last, the first card and the last card will not have a gold token, gold coin, because you get that gold coin um, as part of the game if you select that card. So it's a little bit hard to, to, to um, explain. I won't explain it much more now, but basically, the first and the last card should not have a gold gold piece on them and you can gold that's why i did include these tokens in the bag if you want and it's not necessary because you can already see the gold up there but if you want you could kind of put a little gold piece on here it's already there so i think it's unnecessary but delete those because i think it's already on the card you don't really need it okay then that um beginning with the start player each player randomly draws their starting dice and it's equal, the starting dice are equal to the number of players plus four. So I think we're basically saying we have three players, so that's seven dice each. So again, for our rules, I created a dice pool that has all 73 dice represented by the appropriate color. So how I did that, uh, I should have put a link to the, uh, that table. I'll do that later. Here's my dice pool. So I have 73 entries here if you looked at them. And actually, I probably, let me make sure I reset that. Yep, so 1D73. So if you look at all these, it's just going to have all the colors. So I represent all the colors. So what you would do is when you start, you're going to roll seven times on the table. So I explained it here, roll on the table the number of times. Then look at the output in chat, take the number of colors rolled and their order and roll the appropriate number of D6s in chat. Okay, so what that means is, let's just roll seven times. Okay, so I rolled seven times, it took those dice out because we're simulating that those dice are gone from the bag. So, if I look in here, and this it might get a little tedious, but this is just the setup. So, the first one is a gold, and for me, gold is yellow control. So I'm just going to start with saying, or actually, uh, the best way to do that, I'm sorry, is 
after we do that, we're gonna I'm gonna roll seven d sixes. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's roll those. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take in order, you're gonna take the numbers and match them up to the colors. So if that's the number three for the first dice, the first dice I rolled was gold. So that's a three. So I'm gonna grab this three and put it up here for later. Second dice is a four, and that was white. And my white is control alt. So that was a four. And third dice was a red. That's a one. So red for me is shift alt. So you get the idea. You'll do that rather than do them all and show you that to make this video go quicker. You would do that for all seven. And that would give you your starting dice. So I'm gonna put these over here for now. And then I'm gonna pull up my character or my uh, instructions again, which I closed. Go back to the reference menu. All right, I think I'm just gonna get to the setup, but like I said, I'll finish the setup and then I'll do another video for the actual gameplay when I have a chance. So we did the dice pool. So now you can place the dice on your character board. So there's different, there's a, a whole explanation of how to do this, um, but I'm gonna show you real quick. So I'm gonna kind of cut to the chase. So you're basically gonna put these dice on your character sheet or your character board. And the one thing I just realized as we do that, the one thing I neglected to cover, I kind of skimmed through, is um, once you get your character up too, I'm gonna pull this guy over here because we can put the attributes on the character sheet here too. So let's just say, and again, you can read through the rules and, and it'll tell you like, what you're ultimately gonna do is score your character at the end, so you want, so these are the attributes, no, scores you need, and these are the number of, of points, essentially, or stars, you're gonna score based on number of stars. So for the ranger, I really wanna make sure my con is 18, and, and I wanna make sure my dex is 16 or 17. One thing that's important to note is, you can see here that intelligence could be 14 or any number above 14 whereas some of these have to be a specific number or range. So, so this is important. This gives you, skill, this gives you um, scoring. And then your backstory, depending on where you place dice and the color, you can get points for that too. So if I have a black die in con or a purple die in the middle of intelligence, then ultimately, depending on how well you match these, you get points for this too. And again, I'll cover that in the in the, in the um, actual gameplay video. But, but what you're gonna do is you're basically gonna come in here and drop these on your character. So if you had seven of these, you would decide where you wanna put them. Okay, and I'm not putting them in any particular order. One thing that is important though is you have to start on the left side. You can't like start by putting them right in the middle. You start on the left side. I could do this as long as I started by doing a, uh, filling the, the square on the left first. And I could even fill out the whole row and you get points for that, but again, I won't cover all the detail there. Um, okay, and that's your setup. You also, not during the opening round, but during, during play, it's pretty cool. As you drop dice on, on rounds, you can actually do different actions for each of these skills. Like for strength, when you place a die on strength in future rounds, you can actually swap dice with that spot with anywhere else on the character sheet. Okay, let's see, let me go back to, oh, the other thing, the other thing I did with this uh, character sheet, so if we drop him in the combat tracker, so if I drop him uh, in the combat tracker, you can use this to track the starting player. So you can just, you know, if you had several players, you can just move it down and move down the round and know who the starting player is. But the other thing I've done here is I've created these little um, scoring 
sections of Morcor. And you can see that the elf, and I put it right in the character sheet, I've already automated this, but he gets a plus two to dexterity. So whatever he has here, plus two in order to calculate his number and minus two to con. And that's automated. So if you put in a dex number of one, the, the way I've done this, I just wanted you always to be able to determine what's your score here. It, I know it's pretty easy to add these numbers up, but if I clear chat, and then if I click on this roll button, you can see it tells me I have a three. I've only filled out one square, and I have three dice squares that I'll be able to use, but then I have a plus two because of my decks. Strength, if I put in a four and a three, it's like I have on my character sheet, if I roll, it's just gonna give me a seven because I don't have anything plus there. This, for the end of the game, I thought it'd be neat to track, and I'm not going over the scoring now, but this will track if you want to during the game of how am I doing with my scoring, just to get, give you an idea. All right. That is pretty close to the setup, I think. Think. Let me go back to my reference manual setup. See if I missed anything. Background, market deck, starting dice. So, yeah, before you start the game, drag each character sheet to the combat tracker. Use the combat tracker to track the start player and the order of players and move the tracker down. You know what, guys? I think I'm going to pause it there, and next time I'll go through the anatomy of a round and show you how you put dice on these, which is pretty cool. But basically, during a turn, you'll be putting dice on here, and they might all be different colors, different numbers, but based on the anatomy of the round, you're actually going to be able to pick these dice and place them on your character sheet, and these numbers correspond to what order you go in in terms of buying these cards and these cards will help improve your scoring and might help you improve your scores in terms of your attributes but it's a really neat relatively complex game so you know i'll show you in the next video how to as you get cards you can actually just pin them to different sections of your character board so if you get a weapon you can just place a pin here and always have the ability to look at that so that's it for now, guys. A little bit longer than I intended, but really wanted to walk through the setup in detail. Um, I hope that worked for you. Stumbled through it just a little bit, but I really enjoyed making this. It was a lot of work, but I hope it shows the power of more core and Fantasy Grounds. And thanks again to Keith at Thunderworks Games for letting me convert this for free. Um, so I hope some of you get some use out of it. So until next time, uh, I hope you enjoy playing and please drop me a note if you end up playing i'd love to hear your experience and until then i hope to see you all on the fantasy grounds forums